Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's go ahead and solve that differential equation. We have our initial conditions. Notice we have the initial current through the circuit, the initial voltage across the capacitor, the initial change in the current with respect to time and time is equal to zero over here. And then we also realize that we're going to have a diminishing current because the resistor will take energy out of the circuit. So our current oscillations will diminish over time and the equation will look something like the current with respect to time is going to be equal to some initial current times e to the minus alpha t where alpha depends upon the decay of that current. Now in, instead of using that equation we're going to use a more general solution. We're going to use amplitude for the current and we're going to use a positive exponent there. A positive so e to the positive s times t because there will be several conditions that we have to account for and therefore it's better to use a positive s. In the end, we'll get the negative alpha solution for the proper conditions. If we take the derivative of the current respect to time, we get as times e to the st and the second derivative will be as squared e to the st. Now let's take those and plug those into our equation right there. So for the second derivative, we get as squared times e to the st plus r over l times a s e to the s t plus 1 over l c times let's see here that will be a times e to the s t is equal to zero so all we did was plug in now we can take a look at that and notice that every term has an a in it and every term has an e to the s t so we can go ahead and factor out an a and an e to the s t when we do that our equation becomes as follows a e to the s t times we have an s square plus r over l times s plus c here 1 over l c without the s s to the 0 power and all that equals 0 and now notice that here within the brackets we have a quadratic equation or a quadratic expression of s now we can solve for s as follows. We can say that s is equal to the negative r over l plus or minus the square root of this term squared, which is r squared over l squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 1 over lc. Do that, divided by twice a, which would be 2 times 1, which is 2. All right. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to write this as follows. We have s is equal to minus 2r over 2l plus or minus the square root of, of 4r squared over 4l squared minus 4 over lc like this all divided by 2. Now, when I factor out a 4 of the terms right here and put that in front, I have a 2 and a 2. So I can go ahead and do that. So this will look as follows. That would be equal to minus 2r over 2l plus or minus 2 times the square root of r squared over 4l squared minus 1 over lc all divided by 2 and now notice I can divide the 2 into the numerator of both of the terms right here so s will be equal to uh, minus r over 2l and I'm going to put that in parentheses plus or minus the 2 is now cancelled out times the square root of r over 2l quantity squared and then minus 1 over LC like this and notice that this is now the solution to S. Now what do we mean by the solution of S? Well let's go back to our equation right here. We use this general equation for the current in the circuit. It was equal to A e to the ST and S is now defined by this right here. Now notice that we have a radical and something underneath the radical. 
And let's assume that r divided by 2l quantity squared is bigger than 1 over lc. In that case, we have a positive result here and a real solution. What if this term equals this term? Then the radical disappears and s simply becomes minus r over 2l. And finally, what if this is smaller than 1 over, L over, 1 over Lc? Then we have a negative underneath the radical, and we have an imaginary solution. So there's three possible solutions. And what we're going to do is we're going to explore the three possible solutions when we plug that into our general solution right here. So this is a general solution of the current, and S can be various values depending upon the value for R, L, and C. And so what we're going to do now is in the next video, we're going to take a look at how we can interpret that solution and what kind of equations we're going to end up with depending upon the values for the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. At least, this is a solution to our general differential equation as it belongs to our exponent right here in the equation for the current. So that is how that's done. Now let's go ahead and try to interpret what that solution actually means. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.